Welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over FTD device copy, backup, and restore. To give you a little history, starting in Firepower 623, we were able to do a device copy via the REST API, but it wasn't intuitive and natively in the actual GUI. So in Firepower 6.3, they actually integrated into the GUI to do a quick um, copy to copy policies from a pre-configured device instead of manually reconfiguring the new device. There's a couple things to be mindful of when you're doing a device copy. The source and destination FTD devices have to be the same model, running the same version of Firepower software, have the same number of interfaces, be in the same firewall mode, transparent or routed, same compliance mode, so FIPS or non-FIPS, and be in the same domain. To start out, let's navigate to Devices and then Device Management. Here we'll see a list of our FTD devices. In my environment, I have one already configured device and I have a fresh FTD device actually added. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that and go to Device. Right next to General, we'll see two new buttons. There's one to actually push this device configuration to another FTD device, which I can, it's the one on the right here that I'll go ahead and just click. So if I wanted to push this configuration to another FTD device, I can go ahead and select it from this dropdown. If I wanted to pull the configuration from another device and copy that, I can choose that as well. This is going to fail when I try to do it because my other FTD device is actually on a different version, but I'll just go ahead and show you how you get an actual error message when you try. So as you can see here, it says pretty clearly that the version mismatches on the devices. So we'll go ahead and exit out of this, and I'm going to show you how to do a device backup and restore next. Next, we're going to go ahead and do a backup of my FTD device. To do so, we're going to go ahead and navigate to System, and then Tools, and then Backup and Restore. As you can see here, we can do a backup of the FMC, but we're going to focus on the managed devices. So on the top right here, I'm going to click on Manage Device Backup. And this should pull up all my FTD devices. I'm going to go ahead and start a backup of the one that's already configured. And it'll, by checking that box to retrieve to the Management Center, it's actually going to go ahead and pull that config once it's completed. And I'll, it'll be available for download. Um, for the backup profiles, if I wanted to create a profile of things of different things to actually pull when I'm pulling this uh, backup, I can go ahead and specify it here and use this profile in future backups. And I can also specify to uh, send an email or copy this to a certain place, to a certain host when completed. But I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. I'm not going to focus on a backup profile now. So let's go ahead and give us a few minutes to finish this backup. But if you look on the task list, you can go ahead and see the backup as it's progressing. So yeah, let's just give it a few seconds while it finishes that. Okay, it looks like that backup's completed. Since I did choose the option to pull the backup to the Firepower Management Center, it should be showing here in a few seconds. Yeah, it's importing it now, so give it a few more seconds. Okay, it looks like it's showing up now. So if I check the box next to it, I have a couple options. I can delete it locally on this FMC, or I can download a copy of it, which I'm going to go ahead and do so I can walk you through the steps of restoring it later. If I click on the actual link for the backup, I can see what's in that tar file. It's not really important to go through this, but just kind of giving you a little bit more information. Another thing I can do is if I delete the backup and I decided I deleted an error or I wanted to go ahead and put it back on the FMC, I could go ahead and click Upload Backup and put it right back where it belongs. So yeah, I'm just choosing the local file I just downloaded. and re-uploading it. Now the backup is right where it belongs under Device Backups. Unfortunately, we can't push the restore directly from the FMC. We actually need to either 
load it locally on the device or put it on an SCP server. So that's the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do. Since I have a copy of the backup already on my local PC, what I'm going to go ahead and do is use WinSCP to move that file over to my Linux server, which is also running Splunk, and then I'll restore it from there. All right, now I'm just going to go ahead and move that file over. It's, I think it's my downloads folder. Now that the backup's been moved over, I'm going to go ahead and SSH over to my FTD device. We're going to have to do the restore from the command line. The command that we're going to use is restore remote manager backup location, the IP address of the SCP server, the username I'll be using, and the path that I put the backup into. Then I'll use the backup name, which I have a copy of it over on the other screen, so I'll just copy paste that in there. And I'll need to enter the password for that SCP server. Once it detects that the file is found and that it's valid, it's going to ask you if you'd like to restore it. In this case, I'm not going to do that, but I just wanted to show you the process that you would go through. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and finish this video. Thank you so much for watching.